there's no two ways about it. Triathlon training is hard. Swimming, cycling, running, and on top of that, you've got to add in your strength training, your mobility, flexibility, picking races. It is a massive commitment. And I think recovery is so, so key. If you burn out too early in the season, if you overtrain, you won't get to race. So today we're gonna to be giving you our top tips to prevent burnout and easily recover. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Right, let's get into it. Sleep, ah, oh, sleep is the best way to recover. You should really aim for seven to eight hours a night. That is absolute golden recovery, but sometimes it's hard. If you can get a cat nap during the day as well, that can really help. Even if it's on the train or on the bus to work, a 40 winks at lunchtime, it was really going to aid your recovery and hopefully help you recover better. During sleep is when the body produces the essential hormones that we need to help recover and repair the muscle tissue that we've perhaps damaged during training. I love a good bedtime routine. Get in the best, most efficient sleep as possible. Maybe do no screen time for 30 minutes before you go to bed. Um, make sure the room is quiet. I really like a dark room. Really set that environment, that mood. So when you go to bed, you are going to sleep. You are aiming to recover your body so you can attack the next day's training as best as you can. It's also worth mentioning that sleep is the cheapest, most effective form of recovery there is out there. Another very cost-effective recovery tool is proper nutrition. It's all about getting enough calories in to not only fuel the training, but to aid recovery as well. We want to aim for a good mixture of healthy fats, protein and carbohydrates, so we get an all-round balanced diet. That's right, some people say it's, it's quite hard to overtrain, but it's so easy to underfuel. If you haven't got petrol, if you haven't got gas in your car, you're going nowhere. And it's the same with the body, you need to fuel the machine. It's not just what you eat, but when you eat as well. As triathletes, whether you are pro or amateur, there's a good chance that some days you'll be doing two sessions a day. So it's not just about fueling and recovering from the morning session, for example, but it's about appropriately fueling throughout the day so you're recovered enough to perform again for the next session or even the next day's session. It's all about having a steady flow of good nutritious food and hydration to keep fueled and recovered. Absolutely, and I think snacking is a great way to avoid being hungry. As soon as your body really feels hungry, it's often too late for you to absorb all those good minerals and vitamins for your next session. You really need to stay on top of your nutrition to help best recovery practices. I know for me, I like to pack myself up with healthy snacks to take to work so I'm not caught short and grabbing less nutritious things that are not really gonna benefit my training throughout the day. Absolutely, preparation is everything. Eat today what you're gonna to use tomorrow. Next up, hydration. Your body is 80% made of water. It is crucial to always have a reusable bottle with you whenever you're out and about on the street. Keep sipping it, and when you've got those hard sessions or when it gets hot in the summer, add some electrolyte in there just to replace all those minerals and salts you'll be using through sweat. Also on hydration, you could actually utilize getting calories in for sessions through hydration. Some people are a bit put off by eating enough food, eating through solids, so putting carb mixes into your electrolytes is a good way to fuel the sessions too. And that is really good practice for when you're racing, because when you're racing, you need to take in carbohydrate and electrolytes. And again, after those tough sessions, maybe in the gym or a big paddle set in the pool, it's a great way fluid of getting some protein in. And you can do it on the go. You don't need to make anything. You can have your protein shake um, or your bottle of electrolyte ready to go as soon as you've finished your session. One that you might not expect is to actually do some active recovery. So this is not to be confused with training. This is not an extra session. This is simply low intensity movement. Uh, swimming is a great example, and you can even use it to work on your form. Um, but getting some movement just to, I guess, flush out the sessions that are the high volume or the high intensity work that you've been doing throughout the week. 
I am a big believer in active recovery. As a professional my whole career, I would very rarely take a full day off. I'd often get in the pool, do one, maybe one and a half kilometers swim, nice and easy, and I'd get out, I'd feel refreshed physically. And because it's not a session, I'm not looking at my watch. Mentally as well, I just feel recovered and ready for the next session, which is normally the next day. Um, so yeah, big believer in active recovery. But remember, active recovery is not an excuse for an extra training session. The easier, the better. The Kenyans do a Kenyan shuffle, crazy, crazy slow, but it just helps them loosen off. Whether you're swimming, cycling or running, really, really make sure it's easy. I think a lot of triathletes really struggle to sit still. So this is a good alternative when they should be taking a rest day to not feel like they just sat on the sofa doing nothing. And then sometimes if you do take a, a whole day off, the next day when you want to hit that session, you feel a bit sluggish, you know, you feel a bit sleepy. So sometimes active recovery can actually help you recover for the next day's work. And it doesn't have to be swimming. You could literally take your dog for a walk or do some yoga. Our next tip is to monitor and track your training load. It's crucial to know what you're doing and when you're doing it and how hard it is. Most good training plans or coaches will factor in easy or deload weeks, they like to call it, roughly every three to four weeks. This helps the body recover and also helps you feel more motivated going into the next block of training. You literally can't go faster, 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 faster. Otherwise, you're going to be up there with Vince Louie and Hayden Wilde and Cassandra Bogrant. You have to go three steps forward, recover. Let the body adapt to the training and recovery is key for that. And I think seeing and tracking your training makes sure you don't overtrain or undertrain or do too much of the things that you like and are stronger at and neglect the things that you're not. I think with the training and recovery, balance is crucial. And I think it's not just the tracking. I think the data tells half the story. It's how you feel doing the training. So you, it's good to record that, isn't it? Absolutely. After every session, I actually like to write and almost score how I felt and how it went. And that way my coach can look at that. And sometimes he might turn around and realize I'm probably craving a rest day, even though it wasn't necessarily planned. And sometimes as the body gets tired, so does the mind. And I do think it's important to, to take time away from triathlon you know, turn off your social media when it comes to triathlon, turn off your training diary, and maybe just have a day away from the sport, like work, you know, like anything, we always need rests and breaks from things. And, and I definitely think that really helps you. You want to be fresh mentally as well as physically when it comes to your race season. So having that mental rest is really important as well. There are also plenty of different recovery tools that you can use to help. These are things like ice baths, foam rollers, massage guns, acupuncture. Compression boots, a massage, um, um, some sort of CBD oil rubs for your muscles to, to relax you. It is a smorgasbord of what you can use to recover these days. The list is absolutely endless with these things, but they are a luxury and absolutely not an essential. I think things like hydration, nutrition, sleep, rest and recovery, they are the most cost-effective and the most effective forms of recovery out there. Hopefully that's given you a better idea of how to recover from hard workouts and to prevent burnout. But if you've got any more tips and tricks that you like to use, we would love to know. So drop us a comment and tell us your favorite ones and we will see you on the next video.